Hello, good evening. You're watching News 360 from the News Hub at Adesa Wikanda. I am Portia Gabo. And I'm Issa Moni. Thanks for joining us. We have the headlines for tonight coming up in a moment. In the headlines tonight, President of the National House of Chiefs calls on ECOWAS to ensure change in Togo. News 360 headlines is brought to you by... leaders of West Africa would work assiduously to ensure that change comes to Togo. I'm an up former president John Mahama calls on NDC leadership to quit the blame game and forge ahead for the 2020 general elections. And so the time has come for us to put our differences aside and all of us work together. <laughs> And later we will tell you about how robots are likely to render several people within the banking sector redundant with introduction of new technologies. And then we will show you how the people of Asogli feed the dead as well this hour. Coming up in international news, former president of Nigeria, Olusegun Obasanjo, calls for political change in Togo. And in entertainment in a U.S. country music singer Don Williams, who enjoyed great success with his easygoing singing style, has died at the age of 78. You can get interactive with us that's on Facebook or Twitter.com slash news on TV. And coming up tonight, let's look at the story. This will be for, for traditionalists of the Asogli state in the whole municipality. Sharing of meals with their ancestors requires extra care as a mistake in breaking bones of reserved for the departed could result in dire consequences for the offender. Now, observing All Souls Day as part of the Yam Festival, special bills were prepared to feed the dead. <laughs> The All Souls Day is a major event in the calendar of the Asogli State Yam Festival as is the most important ritual to herald the festival occasion. Known as the Vuvulopua Nkeke in the Ewe dialect, the day is reserved for the feeding of the departed. Led by the Asafo group, animals were slaughtered and prepared along with some meals after which it was first served to the living. Before some of the meals were carried through the principal street of Ho to the cemetery to feed the departed. After the prayers, these men carefully shared the meals with the ancestors. But why should the living share food with the ancestors but can't break bones with them? So the significance of what you just said is that you, 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 when you are clean, you can you can come and eat it, but you can eat it without taking the bones. What what is the the, the, the importance of it? The the reason being not to take in the bone or to crack the bone is that the uh, let's say the dead and then the living there's a different. The the one the meat belong to the living, then the bones for the dead. So that's why we separate ourselves. They are now a spirit. Uh, we also one day go to that place. So. We have to do this as the way our forefathers, they have been doing it. And what happens if one mistakenly breaks a bone reserved for the ancestors? What will happen to you that, let's say, the goat's arm, you, you chew the bone. Your, uh, if you go to her, sometimes 
you to you will you seek with your that the pain. place you feel pain with the place that you chop the bone. Okay. And that's show the difference. Okay. So, so you shouldn't you shouldn't chew the bone at all. You shouldn't if you chew the bone that means you beat them, you chew their food. So they have to come and take what you chew from them. With the rituals performed, organizers of the Yam Festival are confident of receiving the blessing and guidance of the ancestors for the rest of the festivities. From Ho, Nana Kwekwedia, for MG News. Away from the Volta region, figures from the Ghana Health Service indicates approximately 55 stillbirths occur every day despite the 2014 to 2018 National Newborn Health and Strategy Plan. Stakeholders say quality antenatal care is a key component in improving birth outcomes in the country. Gifty Obin has filed this report. A stillbirth is a birth of a baby born with no signs of life at or at 28 weeks gestation. In 2015, there were 2.6 million stillbirths globally, with more than 7,178 deaths daily, with majority of these deaths occurring in developing countries. The medical superintendent of Gun West Municipal Hospital, Dr. Jarvis Abila, says these figures can be reduced if expectant mothers are given the necessary support, particularly from their spouses. We do our engagement with the pregnant women at the antenatal clinic here. We organize community engagement occasionally. Husbands should accompany them to the clinics. When you come, as we give them the talks, you also know what is expected of her. He further enumerated some of the causes of stillbirth which include inefficiency of delivery providers and facilities, high blood pressure, hemorrhage, stress, irregular attendance of antenatal care, and self-medication. When the mother has got an anemia, the mother has got a poorly controlled diabetes, or the mother has lost blood, we call it hemorrhage. You lose blood excessively, and it threatens you, the mother, and threatens the, 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 the baby. The Greater Accra Regional Director of Ghana Health Service, Dr. Linda Vanotu, explained the types of stillbirth and its prevalence in the region. We have two types. We have the fresh stillbirth, in which instance the woman actually went into labor with the baby alive, but through the process of labor and delivery, by the time the baby comes out, you find that the baby is unfortunately dead. And we also have what we call the macerated. And in that instance, the baby actually died some hours, more than 12 hours before the woman went into labor. She disclosed some of the various measures being put in place in terms of logistics and facilities to reverse the trend. We just completed an assessment of what we have, equipment that we have to offer care to newborns. And out of that, we realizing that there's the need to improve in this area, help in this area, and all that. And we've shared our findings with our facilities. A mother, Ajwa Safu Edu, who suffered stillbirth due to medical negligence, recounts her experience. Ghana can improve. The health ministry can improve. Our hospital, the health officials can improve upon what they are doing. They are doing well but they need to improve upon what they do. Because I was in the hospital around 1 p.m. in the afternoon. I was told that the first baby was, was coming, so I had to run from where I was to the labor ward by myself without any help. I went there and the baby came out and then I was told it was macerated. Macerated, I don't know, they are yet to explain to us what macerated means. News 360 and let's turn our attention to education now. As schools reopen next week, business is booming for traders who sell stationary books and materials at the central business district of Accra. However, there are mixed reactions among traders regarding sales. Justin Frimpon has more on this story. It is just about time for schools to reopen and stationary books 
and materials are high on demand. Buyers have flooded various shops and outlets to purchase their goods. Traders are doing very little to do buyers. It's business as usual for traders who sell stationery here at Makola, whilst others are cashing in. Others are also complaining, especially those who sell the textbooks that the publishers supply directly to the schools. I buy primary, primary books and GHS books, nursery, KG, and SI books. These are the uh, uh, thousand cities. Well, the sense is very well because this, uh, this is the time that people are patronizing the books. It's not normal time I you sit down there. While some are just satisfied with the rate of sales, others are unhappy about extremely poor sales. Government school soon as see and never find say omubia omoto adie mai. When government school reopens, that is when we are able to sell. But for the private school, the publishers directly supply to them. So within that three days that the government schools have reopened, we will be able to sell. But if we are unable to sell, it will all gather dust till the next academic year. A buyer also spoke to TV3. In terms of the price, I feel it's a little bit higher than what we are expecting. Traders want government to reduce the cost of duty on imported books to enable them grow their business. Just been from Paul, TV3 News, Accra. In the Ashanti region, producers and vendors of chunks and chop boxes in Kumase are recording a boom in business as pupils prepare for the start of their free senior high school education. The artisans and traders say they will need loan facilities to expand in order to meet demands of students. A report by Ibrahim Abubakar. Anybody who has ever been to the boarding house knows the relevance of trunks and chop boxes. They were every boarder's best companion. Dealing in trunks and chop boxes is an annual lucrative business when junior high school graduates get set to enter senior high school. Patronage, however, has dwindled over the years due to competition from modern trends as some students prefer suitcases. <laughs> But this seems to be changing for some manufacturers and dealers in Kumasi. The usually slow trunk manufacturing point at the Kumasi Central Market has turned into a busy and congested production hub. Workers have had no time to spare in producing to meet the high demand. 28-year-old Richard Osei tells of how hectic it has been having to work all night long. We don't sleep at home. We work here throughout the night, so we cannot meet the high demand. 62-year-old Kujata has sold about 400 trunks in four days and admits the business is lucrative. He, however, says the producers are in urgent need of some loans to expand their businesses. If the government could assist us with loans with little interest, it would go a long way to help us expand and produce more. But there are others like Ahinopoku who are yet to record high sales. Ahin describes his sales volume as normal, but it's hopefully to double from next week. Everything is going normal, and I, I think there's be, going to be much improvement that is ahead to come. A trunk costs between 20 and 50 Ghana cities, depending on size. To politics now, and former President John Dramani Mahama has urged leadership and supporters of the National Democratic Congress in Ghana to quit the blame game, forgive and reconcile as the party marks eight months in opposition. President Mahama said it is time to leave the past behind, forge ahead for the 2020 general elections. Former President Mahama was speaking at a Deba after a walk organized in the northern region to mark the National Democratic Congress's eight months in opposition. It afforded party executives in the region 
the opportunity to touch base with supporters who felt rejected by the rank and file of the NDC during the eight years rule of the party. The former president said a period after the defeat of the NDC should be used for healing and reconciliation of the rank and file of the party ahead of the 2020 general elections. The town cannot leave the map because it's angry with the team. Or the team leave the map because it's angry with the town. Whatever they do, they must live and they must work together. And so the time has come for us to put our differences aside and all of us work together. He suggested the NDC consider replicating the work in the 10 regions of Ghana as a strategy to mend the cracks in the party. If and when I'm available, I will join the other regions to do the same thing. The minority leader and member of parliament for the Tamil South constituency, Haruna Idrusu, questioned the sustainability of financing government free senior high school education and urged President Neku Fuado to rethink the policy's finance. General Secretary of the NDC, Asedun Ketia, urged the MPP party to register the NDC School of Ideology to be taught the principles of logic. When we are pointing out the failures to you, you are now telling us that governance is not like planting cassava. <laughs> if there are problems with logic, let them come and register with NDC party school. We will train them on logical thinking. Let's now focus on development in Togo and the president of the National House of Chiefs, Todbi Apade, wants ECOWAS to work towards ensuring effective democratic process in Togo to enhance the rule of law and development, speaking exclusively to TV3's reporter Nana Kwekwedia at his residence in Ho, the traditional leader insisted democracy is the surest way of promoting peace in the West African country. The Togolese deserve a lot more than uh, they are going through today. The Togolese have to learn from uh, the trends that are prevalent across the world and in Africa in particular. It looks like the Togolese has, have, have, have remained the only, I would say, non-democratic, you know, really speaking, non-democratic uh, country in uh, West Africa. The only country that I'm aware of now is that does not have a term limit to the president's uh, reign. And uh, certainly that, 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 that is uh, un, un, anti-democratic. That is not acceptable in today's uh, world. The contemporary uh, situation we have across the world, you know, that perpetuation of uh, family rule or creation of a dynasty is frowned upon. And I think it's about time that uh, our brothers in Togo learn to be part of the trends that are ruling across the world. What is happening there hurts us because uh, to the foreigner, it's instability in Africa. Not many people know that, you know, Africa is not one country. So I am particularly very concerned. Firstly, because of the unfortunate uh, suffering that our brothers in Togo will be going through. Secondly, the potential impact on us in terms of flood of refugees and of course steadily the impression created abroad that Africa is still unsafe. Africa is still uh, not stable. Democracy hasn't taken root in Africa. When the opposite is true in democratic Ghana, I would uh, wish Togolese would uh, soon uh, be enjoying the kind of peaceful transition from one government to the other that has become a permanent feature of our democracy. And so that we can all boast that all of uh, West Africa is uh, peaceful, all of West Africa is safe for investors, so that we as leaders can uh, work together to pursue the best interests of our people, which I've always said is development. Development that brings jobs, incomes, the big amenities that uh, society requires. ultimate sense of human uh, existence, happiness. And our shared happiness is uh, what we should all uh, be aiming for. So I hope that uh, the leaders of West Africa would work assiduously to ensure that change comes to Togo. So Togo will become part of the democratic change 
the wind that is blowing across all of uh, West Africa and indeed all of Africa. And still on the unrest in Togo, former president of Nigeria, Olusegun Obasanjo, has questioned whether President Yasingbe had anything new to offer. He spoke to the BBC's Peter Okoche. That uh, President uh, for Nasingwe, we have to do something about it. You think he should step down? I believe he should have a new constitution that will have limit to the number of terms uh, that anybody can be pre uh, president, and he should abide by that. I mean, he's been there now for 12 years. Um, do you think it's time for him to step down? I believe whatever he has to do in terms of development, whatever uh, ideas he has, uh, he must have exhausted them by now, unless he has something new that we don't know. And is that, is that the same advice you'd have for other sit, so-called sit-tight, long-staying leaders on the continent? Well, really, after 12, 15 years. Some of them up to 30? Uh, some of them up to 30, some half years. Well, um, but they are, I think we are now, they are becoming a real commodity. Uh, uh, and maybe if you don't leave office, what happens? Office will leave you. Um, not too long ago, I think uh, President Dos Santos decided to leave office. Maybe others will see wisdom in what he has done. Back in Ghana, President Ekufuado says government is in the process of shifting the focus of the economy from taxing industries to supporting industries to thrive. Speaking at the 50th anniversary celebration dinner of Gassim in Accra, he said government will continue to ensure that the cement industry in the country thrives as it gives the private sector the needed environment to grow. Gassem has been a cornerstone of Ghana's infrastructural development, having played a part in major iconic monuments and buildings across the country. The factory was established in 1967 under the guidance of the late Dr. J. A. Addison. With the success of the Tema factory, Gassem opened a second factory in Takrade, with both factories producing over 2 million tons per annum of cement. Today, Gassem operates five strategic depots and two sales offices throughout the country. Speaking at a 50th anniversary dinner, the managing director of Gassem, Martin Gage, said with the increased competition in the country, Gassem is deepening its leadership position by supplying innovative and high quality cement products at an affordable price. Gassem is today one of the major industrial companies in Ghana, contributing significantly to the nation's economic development. Our financial contributions in direct and indirect taxes to the economy in 2016 amounted to 282 million Ghanaian cities. And between 2012 and 2015, our strategic expansion investment reached 52 million US dollars. I would like to assure you of our continuous commitment to produce quality cement in Ghana at an affordable price. President Ekufuado said government will ensure that the cement industry in the country thrives. Ghana's cement industry today is vibrant and is proving to be what we expect of the private sector. Government will, on its part, continue to ensure that the sector gets the regulatory support and the business-friendly environment it needs to thrive. Government is considering a transition to the use of concrete for the construction of more durable roads in Ghana. This means we will need even more cement than before. I believe in the expansion of gas and facilities and production capabilities are therefore in order. And management, as I can see, is in full agreement. Hedelbeck Cement is now the majority stake owners of shares of 93.1% with the Ghana government having 5% and the family of the late Dr. J.A. Addison with 1.9%. You're on News 360 and let's look at what's still ahead tonight.
U.S. country music singer Don Williams, who enjoyed great success with his easygoing singing style, has died at the age of 78 after a short illness. Details coming up shortly to stay with us. Hello again. Let's now go to the central region where inadequate incubators at the Cape Coast Teaching Hospital exposes premature babies to cold as there are only three incubators that serve about 100 babies in a month. Lack of space has also forced officials to convert an enclosed walkway into a ward for babies at the pediatric unit. A report by Spencer Kwabnabwaten Mensa. Between 50 and 100 babies are admitted to the pediatric unit of the Cape Coast Teaching Hospital within a month. Some mothers from within the central region and those referred from beyond the confines of the region depend on the unit for the survival of their babies after about nine months carrying them. Some babies after birth either do not catch breath at all or struggle for breath while others are also born with jaundice. There are those who are born at premature stages and all babies under these three conditions need incubation services in order to live. Nurses at the hospital say they improvise the three incubators available to cater for extra babies at a go, exposing other babies left in the open to the cold. According to Veronica Kumsen, principal nurse of the pediatric unit, although they are warmest to keep the babies warm, the warmers are not sufficient. We try to wrap them uh, with sheets, blankets, and then put on cups and then socks. <laughs> but so, Cold, and so we have to bring them back to the uh, radiant warmer, and then warm them for a long uh, a while, and then we put them back. Babies of different conditions are supposed to be separated from one another, but another challenge facing the unit is lack of space for delivery of health services, forcing unit officials to convert a walkway into a ward. Babies responding to treatment are moved to the walkway to create space for new cases. Here is an improvised space. And so when we get even 10 of the incubators, we won't get a place to keep them. So we need a space, a new place for the unit, so that when we get the machines, we'll be able to keep them and then separate the babies. Officials say these situations deprive babies from receiving warmth from their mothers, which helps to speed up the process of incubation. However, to save babies, Coco Co Charities has donated an incubator worth 10,000 US dollars to help address the situation at the hospital. This forms part of an initiative developed by the foundation three years ago to provide 100 incubators to major health centers across the country as means of reducing infant mortality. Leader of the team, Kwame Sefakai, said the incubator is a tenth out of 100 the team aims to reach and expressed optimism. We should have less reports, or fewer, or even probably zero reports of infant mortality, simply because we don't have incubators. And it is our hope that this presentation will go a long way to help. People come from as far as Takrade, Axim, and the rest to deliver here, and sadly, we lose some of these little angels. Medical Director Eric Ngadu, who received incubator on behalf of the hospital, expressed profound gratitude to Kokoko Charities and was hopeful the gesture will reduce pressure at the pediatric unit. Kofoyudi in the Eastern Region is next to benefit from the Kokoko Charities. And let's now connect to the Volta Region and the Nkwanta Dambai Road. The only link between the district capitals, Nkwanta South and Krachi East, is in a state of disrepair. The feeder road becomes animal trouble when it rains, cutting off many communities along the stretch for weeks. The stretch of roads serve as a major source and link for economic activities between the two districts connecting in Kwanta and Dambai. It runs through communities such as Odumase, Atribi, Tutupene, Ofosu, Kanyata and Yarga, among others. But the state of the road has become terrible, especially during the rainy season. As a result, 
inhabitants of these communities have often suffered losses as their farm produce go bad any time. The deplorable road prevents the artisanal farmers from accessing market centers. The sick, including pregnant women, we were told, have to be carried in structures during emergencies to the Nkwanta District Hospital, about 40 kilometers, in some instances leading to complications and deaths. Residents are therefore appealing to the president and the roads minister to come to their aid to save lives and property. The chief executive officer of the Chamber of Mines, Suleiman Akone, is urging government to focus on the mining industry as a catalyst for effective development, interacting with the media in Kumasi. He underscored the need to leverage the mining industry for broad-based socio-economic development, a report by Benjamin Adu. Government has outlined its agenda for industrial transformation to fulfill its promises of job creation and economic growth. The Chief Executive Officer of the Ghana Chamber of Mines, Suleiman Akoni, observed successive governments have failed to explore the full potential of the mining industry. He called on the Kufuado led administration to make the mining sector a major driver of economic transformation. He noted that although revenue is important, Ghana needs to leverage on the revenues to explore the development outcomes of mining. Assuming we are able to get local people to produce locally, this $44 million which we were using to import grinding media would have stayed in this country and it will help create more jobs. And if we do that, what we'll be doing is to be improving our manufacturing base in this country. The Ghana Chamber of Mines Chief Executive underscored the need to regularize activities of small-scale miners to ensure they undertake responsible mining. The impact on our farmlands, the impact on cocoa production, the deaths which are reported, the fatalities which are reported, the injuries which are reported, everybody knows about this. So it is crunch time for solutions. How do we find solutions to this menace? The good news is that the chamber is collaborating with government at the highest level to ensure that we find workable solutions to this menace. And the Minister of Fisheries, Elizabeth Naafolikwe, has appealed to chiefs to join the ministry to stop all forms of illegal fishing practices. Elizabeth Kwe also commended the Omanhin of the Elimina traditional area, Nanakojo Kondria, for his commitment to the fight and urged others to emulate his example. Ghana paid dearly for allowing illegal, unregulated and unreported fishing practices as the European Union, which is the biggest market for fish exports, plays temporal ban on fish from the country. The development prompted policymakers to revise the laws and called for their enforcement. Yet many stakeholders are opposed to the effort by the sector ministry leading to violent confrontations. But one traditional ruler, Nanakojo Kondria, out of his own volition, ensured Elmina is not part of those. Addressing a fisheries validation forum in Elmina, the sector minister applauded the efforts of the Mahin of Elmina and wish others emulate his shining example. I have for the government now yet to me a fight illegal fishing. We need the chief to support us fight illegal fishing, just like Nana Kondia is doing here in Elmina. Their subject listened to them, hence their role is crucial in the fight against illegalities in our waters. We are pleading with all to join us eliminate the wrongs. The Fisheries Governance Validation Meeting was organized by the USAID, the UCC Fisheries and the Coastal Management Capacity Building Support Project. The issue we are talking about here require both medium to long term solutions that we are interested in. So even though the result may not be here right now and the consequences may not be very palatable, we know that at the end of the day, the result that we get in the long term, particularly as you consider the fact that a lot of our uh, fisher folks along the coast solely depend on fishing for their livelihood. And if it is not there, the question is, in the long term, what will happen? And that must be the driving force of what the solutions must be. The meeting brought together 
sub cheese, quaints, and fish mongers within the Edina traditional area. The participants enumerated the challenges they are facing in the industry and suggested some ways in curbing them. In other news tonight, the mud police post structure for the Swaman district of the Western region, constructed in the 1960s, is in a dilapidated state, which has resulted in some jailbreaks in the past. The district commander says the building serving as the district police station is now a death trap, posing safety hazards to personnel and persons on detention. Is on the verge of collapse and could give away any time soon unless steps are taken to fix it. The facility, which also serves as residence for the police personnel, has most of its roof rift off, while the structure leaks badly each time it rains. According to some police personnel who spoke on anonymity, they feel rejected by the country as law enforcers. Police personnel working in the district, numbering about 16, live together with some of their families. They further stated they were not happy living in a dilapidated structure, but had to contend with the situation due to the lack of a place to accommodate them, not to mention their place of convenience. The Swaman District Police Commander Superintendent Joseph Aka narrated the ordeal to the news team. It's the job that has brought us here, and we have been pleading with the Honorable DC and anybody who comes around that, they should assist the police so that the police uh, working in a good environment can perform better. He further revealed that they had recorded some jail breaks due to the dilapidated nature of their structures and called for immediate intervention from authorities. Let's now go to the Volta region and the people of Alavano in the Hohoi municipality have called on the state and civil society groups who wants to see peace returned to the area to go beyond just calling for calm. The paramount chief of the area, Todby Gacha G. Atakra, told the Volta Regional Peace Council there will be no peace if the hearts of the afflicted are not mended and justice served without prejudice. The communal conflict between the people of Alavano and Inkonya began as a land dispute in 1923 during the German colonization of the Transvolta Togoland. The perpetrators were arrested by the German colonial rulers and appropriate sanctions applied. The two traditional areas have enjoyed relative peace from then until 1983 when violence again erupted. According to available records, the two communities clashed over a well which was the only water source in the area during the devastating drought in 1983. Lives were lost, but unlike the 1923 incident, no arrest was made, leaving the people to take the law into their own hands. Since then, the conflict has almost become an annual ritual between the two communities who have been launching on and off attacks on each other. There have been repeated calls for calm but to no avail as the two continue to blame and accuse each other of wrongdoing. This, the paramount chief of Alavanya traditional area, Tobega Che Jane Atakra the seventh, thinks should not be the case. <laughs> The real issues must be taken into consideration. Just calling for calm will never solve the problem. People have been hurt, others have become orphans, so their issues must be addressed and a critical approach to the solution applied. Alavanos want peace and it must be given fairly. A peace initiative organized jointly by the Paramount Queen of Alavanyo and the Volta Regional Peace Council saw Togbega Atakra blaming successive governments of paying less service to the issue. Governments do not regard us as persons with concerns. They neglect us all these they've neglected us all these years and only appealing to us to cease fire. Peace deals cannot hold when people are in pain. Member of the Peace Council took turn to appeal for calm, urging the people to give peace a chance. If we really want peace, we must have peace within ourselves. If you have peace within yourself, 
you can be able to live at peace with everybody. So we want to appeal to these two communities. If there is an issue between us, that doesn't mean that we must kill one another. Paramount Chief of VAKPO and member of the Regional Peace Council, Tobega Bogbolulu V, pleaded with Tobega Atakura to get his people to chart the course of peace. We are on News 360 and sports is next right after the break. Well, hello, good evening. It's time now to do sports here on News 360. My name is Yao Fusilab. Now let's get off to our first story now. The Black Stars B got off to a winning start in the 2017 Wafu Cup as they beat Gambia by one goal to zero at the Cape Coast Stadium on Saturday. Ghana, who beat Gambia 4-1 in the opening game of the 2013 edition of the Wafu Cup, were heavily tipped to trample over the Scorpions. However, the Gambians uh, scrambled that thought as they played their hearts out to prevent another defeat from the Ghanaian side. Uh, uh, though the Black Stars team B side dominated the entire game, they left it late to beat the Scorpions from the spot kick, uh, which was calmly converted by Vincent Tatinga to grant the Ghanaian team a safe passage to the next phase of the tournament. Well, after the game, coach of the Black Stars team B-side, Max Okunedu, was pleased with the performance of the team and, however, did not downplay the performance of his opponents as he tagged them as very tough. He gave us a very, very, very good match. I really appreciate how they played. They were very organized and all that. But I also have to congratulate my boys. You know, playing in front of your home fans and if the goals are not coming, you know, the fans were game Vincent Atinga, and Atinga calmly the ball home for a first goal. well so that's it uh, in the English Premier League quite a, an exciting day of football really uh, in the English Premier League there so Chelsea beating Leicester by two goals to one. Uh, uh, Manchester City also beating uh, Liverpool by five goals to zero. And Man United uh, beating, uh, joined against Stoke City uh, by two two in there. So as you can see on your screen there, five zero. Also Arsenal against Bournemouth ending by three goals to uh, zero. Brighton and Hove Albion beating West Bromwich Albion by three goals to one. Everton losing at home to Tottenham Hotspur. Leicester City losing at home to Chelsea by two goals to one. Well, that's it for sports here on News 360. My name is Yao Fusilabi. Good evening. I'll be looking for my records to play tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> In other news, Ghanaian gospel musician Superintendent Kofi Sapon escaped a near-fatal motor accident on the Kwakomasi Road Friday evening. The vehicle in which he was traveling in was totally mangled, but the singer survived and hurt. Also, Arai has more. Reports indicate the Ayinjum composer, DSP Kofi Sapon, was traveling to support the album launch of fellow gospel musician Sir Gabi. The life-threatening accident which occurred on Friday night left his car severely damaged. The vehicle is said to have crashed into a truck full of lumber. An amateur video released hours after the accident captures Superintendent Kofi Sapon praising God for sparing his life. <laughs> The Marjin Kwak composer is said to have reported at the Nkoko Government Hospital for checkup. Right now, that's what we call miracle. <laughs>
Exactly. Uh, I mean, DSP Kovisa Pong, mm -hmm. I hope uh, well, he will really get out of the superintendent Kovisa Pong. I'm sure he will get out mm -hmm. of that situation. He's not really hurt and he's yeah. singing. We thank God for that. Mm -hmm. Well, that's it for News 360. Thanks so much for watching. I am Portia Gabo. And I'm Issa Keep watching TV3. Coming up is music, music.